There's a special case of cities which have a lot of travel between them, below about 500 miles of distance, where um, I think the Hyperloop would be useful. Elon Musk has just unveiled the most groundbreaking innovation of 2024, and it's unlike anything the world has ever seen. Introducing the Hyperloop, a transport system that moves three times faster than Japan's bullet train. This revolutionary technology is set to become the fastest mode of transportation in human history, outpacing even the Boeing 747. But what makes the Hyperloop so incredibly fast? And how will it reshape the future of travel? Join us for this special episode as we dive into Elon Musk's futuristic Hyperloop. The Fascinating Innovation of Elon Musk When most people think of the Hyperloop, they often imagine it as a specific invention proposed by Elon Musk a few years ago. In reality, the Hyperloop isn't a single fixed product. It's a broad category of high-speed transportation, representing a vision for the future of travel. The core idea is both simple and ambitious. Passengers or cargo would travel in pods through a nearly airless tube at incredible speeds, potentially three and a half times faster than Japan's Shinkansen bullet trains. The idea of achieving these speeds without leaving the ground has captured the imaginations of many. But how did it come about? And what exactly does Musk envision? Elon Musk first introduced the concept of a fifth mode of transportation, the Hyperloop, in July 2012, during an event in Santa Monica, California. His vision was a radical improvement in speed, efficiency, and safety. Musk proposed that the Hyperloop could be immune to weather conditions, collision-free, twice as fast as a plane, and capable of running around the clock using its own energy storage systems. While it sounds ambitious, this vision aligns with Musk's history of tackling seemingly impossible projects, whether it be revolutionizing electric cars with Tesla or exploring space with SpaceX. The term Hyperloop itself is derived from the concept of a looped system, where pods travel through a near-vacuum tube. Musk has described it as a combination of a Concorde, a railgun, and an air hockey table. An intriguing comparison that paints a picture of something far beyond what we currently see in transportation. By 2016, he even hinted at the possibility that future versions of the Hyperloop might reach hypersonic speeds, which are beyond the speed of sound. However, the air cushion technology Musk initially proposed has proven to be inefficient for practical use. Private companies that eventually took over the design have now mostly abandoned the air cushion idea in favor of magnetic levitation, or maglev technology. As we proceed, we'll find out how the Hyperloop technology would beat the speed of a Boeing 747. But before then, we need to ask ourselves, is the Hyperloop really a novel idea? Birth of Hyperloop Technology While Musk's idea might seem like a product of modern-day innovation, the concept of super-fast travel through tubes isn't entirely new. It has roots in transportation studies that date back over 200 years. In the late 18th century, a British inventor named George Medhurst explored the use of compressed air for propulsion and filed a patent in 1799 for a system that would move goods through iron pipes. In the early 19th century, he was already imagining revolutionary ideas for transportation. He envisioned a system where carriages could run on rails, propelled by a continuous tube placed beneath the tracks. Though his vision didn't take off immediately, Medhurst's work hinted at the potential of pneumatic propulsion. As the 1800s progressed, the idea of using compressed air became more central to the development of transportation systems. Even in 1845, the London and Croydon Railway experimented with atmospheric trains, using a vacuum between the rails to push the train forward. This idea continued to evolve, and in the 1860s, the Crystal Palace Atmospheric Railway in South London briefly operated using a giant fan to push and pull a train through a tube. While these early attempts were short-lived, they demonstrated the potential of tube-based transportation systems. Musk's Hyperloop also draws inspiration from the work of Robert Goddard, a pioneering rocket scientist. In 1909, Goddard wrote an article titled The Limit of Rapid Transit, 
in which he envisioned a train that could travel from Boston to New York in just 12 minutes. His idea, although never realized, included key elements that would later become central to the Hyperloop. Levitating pods, traveling in a vacuum-sealed tube. After World War II, French scientist Jean Bertin attempted to develop a similar system called the Aerotran, which used air cushions for propulsion. However, like many before him, Bertin's work ended due to funding issues. By the 1990s, MIT researchers, led by Professor Ernst Frankel, were working on a vacuum tube train designed to travel between New York and Boston in just 45 minutes. Despite this promising research, the project was shelved. Musk's Hyperloop idea builds on these earlier concepts, but with a modern twist. The use of tunnels, vacuum-sealed tubes, and capsules to transport people or cargo. Musk has even likened it to the pneumatic tube systems that used to transport documents around office buildings, with items zipping from one place to another at high speeds. Why Elon's Hyperloop stands out. The proposed design for the Hyperloop is a fascinating blend of advanced aerodynamics and engineering aimed at achieving ultra-high speed travel. At its core, the Hyperloop system consists of sealed capsules or pods that carry up to 28 passengers. These capsules travel through low-pressure steel tubes, creating an environment where friction and air resistance are minimized. This allows for extraordinary speeds, up to 700 miles per hour. During peak times, the capsules could depart every 30 seconds, making the system not just fast, but highly efficient in terms of passenger flow. There is even a larger version of the system that could carry vehicles, like cars, allowing for both passenger and cargo transport. The pods themselves are spaced approximately 37 kilometers apart and are supported by a system of air bearings. These bearings use compressed air and aerodynamic lift to keep the pods suspended, allowing them to essentially float within the tube. This method of suspension is key to reducing the friction that would typically slow down such a vehicle. Steel tubes are welded together side by side to allow travel in both directions, with pylons placed every 30 meters to support the structure. Solar panels mounted on top of these tubes provide much of the energy needed to power the system, making it environmentally sustainable. The tubes are designed to be highly efficient. With an outer diameter of 2.29 meters and a 30 millimeter thickness, the tube structure ensures minimal air resistance, while the inner diameter of 2.23 meters is optimized to create an air cushion around the capsules. This setup significantly reduces drag and enhances performance. Propulsion is handled by linear accelerators positioned along the tube, which give the pods periodic boosts of speed. The capsules themselves are equipped with rotors that transfer momentum from these accelerators, keeping the pods moving through the tube at high speed. One of the biggest engineering challenges with the Hyperloop system is managing air pressure and friction inside the tubes. While the idea of a full vacuum is appealing, it's challenging to maintain in practice, especially with stations and the potential for leaks. Instead, Hyperloop engineers aim for a partial vacuum, using air pumps placed regularly along the route to maintain low pressure. Air is still present, but its impact is minimized. This, combined with the air bearings and aerodynamic lift, ensures that the pods can glide smoothly through the system. The pylons supporting the tubes must also be designed to handle thermal expansion and shifting ground conditions. They are spaced and adjusted for safety and stability, with reinforced concrete proving to be the most efficient construction material. Detailed design work for the system has been done using tools like AutoCAD, focusing on maximizing efficiency while minimizing costs. A critical element of the system is its reliance on air bearings, which help the pods float on a cushion of air. This approach is similar to magnetic levitation technology, where trains like Japan's maglev system reach speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour by eliminating friction between the train and the tracks. Development process of the first Hyperloop. As mentioned earlier, Virgin Hyperloop One, a key player in the race to build the Hyperloop, has proposed a different levitation method, 
passive magnetic levitation. Here, magnets on the pods interact with an aluminum track, creating levitation without the need for expensive copper coils that power active maglev systems. This makes it a more cost-effective solution. The high costs initially associated with building a Hyperloop stem from its technology and external factors, such as acquiring land, dealing with densely populated areas, and navigating geologically complex terrain. But with Maglev, this is managed. Elon Musk's version of the Hyperloop even takes it further by incorporating low-pressure tubes, similar to how high-altitude flights work. The lower air pressure reduces resistance, making the system highly energy efficient, which is crucial for any large-scale transit system. The original idea for very high-speed transit involved creating a full vacuum inside the tubes, but maintaining such an environment is incredibly challenging. Instead, the Hyperloop uses regular air pumps to lower the pressure inside the tubes, reducing air resistance while allowing for practical operation. Air is pumped from the front of the pod to the rear, helping reduce drag and maintain speed. The tubes are envisioned as metal structures elevated above ground, though they could also be built underground. Musk has even suggested that the solar panels installed on top of these tubes could generate enough electricity to power the entire system, further enhancing its sustainability. Since Elon Musk first presented the Hyperloop concept in 2013, Several companies have taken up the challenge of bringing it to life. Virgin Hyperloop One began its work in earnest in May 2016 with an open-air test in North Las Vegas. A few months later, the company published a feasibility study highlighting the potential economic and environmental benefits of a Hyperloop connection between Helsinki and Stockholm. Such a system could reduce travel time between these two capitals to just 28 minutes a dramatic improvement over current travel options. In March 2017, Virgin Hyperloop unveiled images of its test site in the Nevada desert, named DevLoop. This 500-meter-long, 3.3-meter-wide facility became the world's only full-scale Hyperloop test site at the time. Geigel, a key figure at the company, noted that over 150 engineers, technicians, and fabricators worked to transform the barren desert into a testing ground for the future of transportation. By July 2017, the team had completed its first full system test in a vacuum environment, where the vehicle traveled through the tube for 5.3 seconds, reaching two Gs of acceleration and a speed of 69 miles per hour. Just a month later, the Hyperloop vehicle had already reached speeds 2.7 times faster than the initial test covering the 500 meters of DevLoop in record time. These developments show that while the Hyperloop concept is still in its early stages, significant progress is being made. If these early tests are any indication, the dream of high speed, low cost, and environmentally friendly transportation may soon become a reality. With these impressive advancements, is it really hard to believe the Hyperloop will be faster than a Boeing 747? If you still have doubts, Let's find out how the Hyperloop beats the Boeing 747 speed. On February 8, 2020, the weather over the North Atlantic created the perfect conditions for record-breaking transatlantic flights. British Airways flight GCIVP, a Boeing 747 traveling from New York to London, managed to complete its journey in just 4 hours and 56 minutes, arriving 80 minutes ahead of schedule. Normally, this flight takes about six and a half hours, but the unusually strong polar jet stream that day, with wind speeds of 220 knots at the core, made all the difference. Mind you, traveling at 220 knots wind speed is equivalent to traveling at about 408 kilometers per hour, and this was groundbreaking speed for Boeing. But then, in October of the same year, Virgin Hyperloop reached a major milestone by successfully completing its first passenger test. Virgin Hyperloop had already showcased its progress globally through demonstrations and testing, but this was the first time that actual passengers were on board. The test validated the safety and feasibility of this new mode of high-speed transportation, bringing the Hyperloop concept one step closer to reality. Inside the Hyperloop tube, the battery-powered pod glided at speeds of up to 670 miles per hour, 
well above 1,000 km per hour. And that's not all. Around the same time, a Spanish company called Zeleros, based in Valencia, was also making strides in the world of Hyperloop development. Zeleros first gained attention after winning the Best Hyperloop Proposal and Best Propulsion System prizes at the 2015 SpaceX Hyperloop Pod Competition, a contest created by Elon Musk's SpaceX to encourage innovation in the field. Following their success, Zeleros began developing a prototype in 2016. By June 2019, they had formed a partnership with Siemens to help build the technology and infrastructure required for their project. Zeleros's CEO, David Pistoni, highlighted the company's focus on reducing infrastructure costs and maintenance while employing aerodynamic propulsion similar to that used in airplanes, but powered entirely by electricity. In 2020, they secured £7 million in funding, marking a major step in their development. The next goal for Zeleros is to build a full vehicle that integrates the technologies they've been refining in the lab and set up a test track to simulate real-world operational conditions. Meanwhile, Eurotube, a Swiss organization founded in 2017 at ETH Zurich, has been working on vacuum transport technology. In 2019, Eurotube transitioned into a Swiss foundation and began focusing on building a 3.1-kilometer test tube in Colombi Muraz, Switzerland. Their test track is designed to reach speeds of up to 900 kilometers per hour, putting them at the forefront of Hyperloop research in Europe. Like other companies, Eurotube is collaborating with public and private partners to further develop and demonstrate the feasibility of Hyperloop technology. This effort is closely linked with the European Hyperloop Center in Groningen, which is currently under construction. This facility will feature a 420-meter test track, and testing is expected to begin in the near future. The Continuous Innovation with the Hyperloop Technology The push to develop Hyperloop technology received a major boost from the Hyperloop Pod Competition, a global contest created by SpaceX in 2015. While SpaceX and Elon Musk were not directly involved in the commercial aspects of Hyperloop development, the competition sparked interest from universities and innovators around the world. The first competition in 2016 was held at SpaceX's headquarters in California, where over 700 teams initially submitted proposals. The competition was fierce, and after a round of selections, more than 120 student teams were invited to submit their final designs. The inaugural event took place in January 16 at Texas A&M University, where MIT's team won the overall competition, showcasing their leadership in Hyperloop research. Delft University won second place and the Pod Innovation Award, while other universities like Wisconsin-Madison and Virginia Tech also earned recognition for their designs. These competitions were not just about speed, but also about innovation and safety. Over time, the focus shifted toward achieving higher speeds. By August 2017, the competition was entirely about maximizing speed while ensuring smooth deceleration. War Hyperloop, a team from the Technical University of Munich, TUM, emerged as a dominant force. They reached a speed of 324 km per hour in the second competition in 2017 and continued to break records in subsequent years. By 2019, they set a new world record of 463 km per hour a feat that remains unbeaten to this day. The TUM Hyperloop team, previously known as WARR Hyperloop, has continued its research and development, focusing on proving the technical and economic viability of the Hyperloop. They are now working on a 24-meter demonstrator, which will include both a full-size pod and tube. The plan is to eventually expand this to 400 meters to test for even higher speeds with potential locations for this extended test track in Taufkirchen, Ottobrunn, or the Oberpfaffenhofen airfield near Munich. By July 2023, they had already started the certification process for operational testing, further advancing the Hyperloop's potential. In December 2022, several major Hyperloop companies, including Virgin Hyperloop, Hard Hyperloop, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, Transpod, Zelleros, SwissPod and Nomo joined forces to create the Hyperloop Association. 
This newly formed group is dedicated to advancing Hyperloop technology on a global scale. One of their main objectives is to collaborate with governments and regulatory bodies to shape policies that will enable the smooth integration of Hyperloop into existing transportation systems. The association is led by Ben Piekarski, CEO and co-founder of NOMO, and represents a united effort to push Hyperloop technology into the mainstream. Global Benefits of the Hyperloop Technology Elon Musk originally pitched the idea of the Hyperloop as a cost-effective, sleek alternative to California's planned $70 billion high-speed rail project. He argued that the Hyperloop could be built for a fraction of that cost, saving several billion dollars. However, no one has yet been able to determine a precise cost for building a real-world Hyperloop system. The bigger issue now is who will pay for it. While some wealthy backers have invested in Hyperloop technologies, other companies like Hyperloop Transportation Technologies are still trying to attract investors, especially for building test tracks. If these private firms can't secure enough funding from investors, they might have to turn to government support. But with the current political climate, getting public funding might be challenging. Another major challenge relates to passenger experience. Early designs showed sleek, futuristic pods zipping through transparent tubes, but in reality, the system might look quite different. The actual pods could be enclosed in metal tubes, raising concerns about how comfortable it will feel for passengers. Those prone to motion sickness might find the ride uncomfortable. To address this, Dirk Allborn, one of the key figures in the Hyperloop development, has suggested using in-pod displays to simulate a more familiar experience, such as riding in a car. Despite its promise of being faster than a jumbo jet and nearly as fast as the now-retired Concorde, how passengers will experience the journey remains to be seen. Time-saving is another selling point of the Hyperloop, but this depends on how the system is designed. Specifically, where the stations are located will be crucial. If the Hyperloop stations are built far from city centers, passengers might lose time traveling to and from the station, reducing the overall time savings. This is a key factor that will influence how competitive Hyperloop will be compared to planes or trains, especially for shorter trips. Safety is a huge concern with a system designed to operate at such high speeds inside near vacuum tubes. If a pod were to stop suddenly within the tube, the system would need to alert other pods and initiate emergency braking. The spacing between the pods would need to be carefully calculated to ensure they could stop safely without colliding. In case of a vacuum leak or rapid depressurization, there would be safety protocols similar to those used in airplanes to manage the situation. However, there is also concern about a single failure affecting the entire network. With pods potentially traveling at over 500 miles per hour, any stoppage could ripple across the entire system, raising serious safety considerations, particularly in densely populated areas. Then, there's the question of security. As a new mode of transportation, it's unclear whether Hyperloop will need to meet security standards similar to those used in commercial air travel or something closer to passenger rail standards. These security requirements, along with the associated costs, will affect the competitiveness of the system and how it integrates into existing transportation networks. On top of that, there's the issue of energy consumption. Since Hyperloop technology is still in development, there's no clear answer to how it will impact national and local electricity grids. The system will rely on a lot of energy to operate, and researchers are actively studying how it might affect power usage and grid stability. Estimations and simulations are being done based on hypothetical scenarios and existing technologies, but real-world data won't be available until the system is fully operational. Despite these challenges, the potential impact of the Hyperloop on transportation is immense. If it works as envisioned, the Hyperloop could revolutionize how we travel by being faster, safer, more convenient, and energy efficient compared to current options. Imagine traveling between cities at speeds of up to 700 miles per hour. That's much faster than driving, and even faster than many trains. The Hyperloop could even rival air travel in terms of speed, especially for shorter regional routes, where the hassles of airport security and boarding 
can add significant time to a journey. The system is also expected to offer more flexible, on-demand departure schedules, allowing passengers to travel whenever they need, rather than waiting for a scheduled train or plane. Another benefit is that the Hyperloop would likely have fewer stops than traditional trains. For city pairs that are less than 900 miles apart, it could be the fastest and most efficient option, offering non-stop travel between destinations. For longer distances, however, supersonic planes might still hold the advantage. The convenience factor is also significant. Unlike high-speed trains that require long connected cars, Hyperloop pods are smaller and can travel independently or in groups. These pods, which could carry around 20 to 30 people, could depart as frequently as every two minutes, potentially reducing wait times and increasing travel flexibility. In addition to speed and convenience, the widespread adoption of the Hyperloop could reduce traffic congestion in cities. Fewer cars on the road could mean less gridlock, particularly on highways leading into major urban centers. It could also alleviate pressure on airports, as more people choose Hyperloop over short regional flights. While the Hyperloop is still under development and faces many technical and financial challenges, its potential to transform the future of transportation is clear. It promises a new era of faster, more efficient and sustainable travel that could reshape how we move between cities and regions. Hyperloop, an adoption of clean energy. The Hyperloop has often been promoted as an environmentally friendly alternative to existing modes of transportation, largely because of its use of vacuum tubes to reduce aerodynamic drag. This, combined with its potential to run on renewable energy, could make it more energy efficient than cars, trains, or even planes. Virgin Hyperloop One, for example, highlights that global flights emitted an astonishing 946 million tons of CO2 in 2017 alone. By replacing short to mid-range flights, those between 310 and 930 miles, with Hyperloop trips, they estimate a 58% reduction in emissions, assuming the system runs entirely on renewable electricity. Sustainability has been a priority for many involved in developing the Hyperloop. Gabrielle Semino, from the Technical University of Munich's Hyperloop team, points out that young engineers today are highly focused on efficiency and sustainability. As he notes, the environmental costs of burning fossil fuels are well understood, and Hyperloop designers want to avoid the mistakes of past transportation systems. Dirk Allborn. CEO of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, shares this vision. He has ambitious plans to integrate renewable energy sources, from installing solar panels along Hyperloop routes to using regenerative braking technology to generate power. Alborn has even considered installing wind turbines on unused land around the Hyperloop tracks to maximize energy efficiency. However, some experts, such as engineering professor Roger Goodall, remain skeptical. He argues that while solar panels are a good idea, they might not generate enough energy to meet the needs of the Hyperloop. A system running at such high speeds requires a massive amount of energy, and balancing sustainability with the system's power demands is likely to be one of the biggest challenges. Another hurdle for the Hyperloop is the infrastructure itself. Building miles of vacuum-sealed tubes and stations Acquiring the necessary land and navigating regulatory and environmental issues will be a monumental task. The tubes would need to be supported by columns and elevated to avoid disrupting existing infrastructure, a plan that comes with its own set of environmental challenges. Many companies are considering building elevated tracks along highway medians or next to railways to minimize their environmental footprint. One of the reasons for elevating the tubes is to reduce land usage and avoid interfering with wildlife. According to Hammer, this approach would limit the need to acquire vast amounts of land, which is a common challenge for large infrastructure projects, and also prevent disrupting local ecosystems. Elon Musk's boring company is also working on ways to reduce the project's environmental impact. They are currently planning a tunnel between New York City and Washington, DC, which could either serve as a hyperloop route or an automated car transport system. Though the company has remained tight-lipped about the details, 
the fact that construction has begun on a building in D.C. that could serve as a Hyperloop station suggests they are moving forward with the project. One often overlooked concern with the Hyperloop is noise. While most of the system will be enclosed, there are still questions about how loud it will be. Early tests have suggested that the pods will be quieter than highways, but as with any new technology, real-world testing will be crucial to fully understand its impact. Finally, the designers of the Hyperloop are also focused on making sure the system doesn't become obsolete. Hammer's team is working on designs that will ensure the infrastructure can adapt and evolve, rather than being abandoned or outpaced by future technologies. But building and maintaining such a system will come with significant technical and financial challenges. One major concern is how passengers will handle the rapid acceleration and high speeds of the Hyperloop. While commercial jets travel at similar speeds and manage to keep passengers comfortable during turbulence and changes in speed, the Hyperloop faces additional difficulties because it operates on the ground, not in the sky. Creating a smooth, straight path for the tubes over varied terrain will be a monumental engineering feat. That said, it's not impossible. Humans have already built complex transportation systems like the Eisenhower Interstate System, where engineers overcame mountainous terrain by tunneling through it or bridging across bays. If we can manage those challenges, there's no reason we can't do the same for the Hyperloop. The engineering is possible, but the question now is whether there is enough collective will to make it a reality. The work being done by companies like Virgin Hyperloop and Tum Hyperloop shows that the technology is advancing. Whether the Hyperloop can truly replace planes and trains, though, depends on how these challenges are addressed. If they can be overcome, the Hyperloop could revolutionize how we travel. Faster, greener, and more convenient than ever before. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.